today um before that uh good afternoon everyone thanks for coming and then uh we will be looking at ranking cycle today okay so we have stopped on Carnot cycle so we are going ahead with ranking cycle okay so you know why ranking cycle is introduced it's due to the impracticalities of Carnot cycles okay of Carnot cycles if you were to view my previous videos or podcasts you will know that okay what are the limitations of Carnot cycle even though it is an ideal cycle it possesses a lot of it consists of, of, of uh, limitations okay so thing is uh, looking into problem solving okay introduction ranking cycle we have already discussed earlier okay in the previous lessons now steam is applied dry saturated at 40 bar to a turbine and the condenser pressure is 0 0.035 bar now, if the plant operates on the Rankine cycle or Rankine cycle, calculate per kilogram of steam. And then they want us to calculate put the work required for the feed pump work. Part two is the work input. Okay, this is the work input. Feed pump work is actually the work input. And then the heat transferred to the condenser that is heat rejected. Okay, cooling tower. Uh, sorry cooling water and the amount of cooling water required through the condenser if the temperature rise of the water is assumed to be 5.5 kelvin okay the heat supply the ranking efficiency and the specific steam consumption okay later on i will define this specific steam consumption this new term here okay and then part b they want us to compare it with carnot cycle that means comparing the ranking cycle based on operating pressure of 40 bar and 0 0.035 bar the ranking and Carnot. okay so first thing is we are going to draw the ranking cycle so this is the ranking cycle so remember this is the saturation dome so you have the boiler pressure and the condenser pressure so the boiler pressure on the ts diagram the pressure line appears like this okay slanting and then it touches at the moment it touches the saturated liquid line it is horizontal here until it touches the dry saturated vapor line it's is slanting okay up upwards okay so this is the boiler pressure of 40 bar and this would be the condenser pressure of 0 0.035 bar condenser pressure okay so point one starting at this point here which is saturated liquid and point two where it comes out from and it is compressed liquid and it goes into the boiler until it reaches point three here which is dry saturated so this part here is the turbine so the inlet to the uh, turbine is dry saturated okay dry saturated 4d bar okay so this is dry saturated and this is wet vapor so remember for wet vapor or the mixture of uh, liquid and vapor we have to find out what we call dryness fraction before we can proceed forward okay so now this is the schematic diagram based on one to two where you have your work in that is based on the pump where it undergoes isentropic compression then to the boiler where it undergoes constant pressure heating then to the turbine where it undergoes isentropic expansion work is extracted so you have work output now this work output will be converted to electrical power if you have a generator or an alternator and then after that after the full expansion through the turbine it will goes into the condenser where it will be condenses okay and it turns back to saturated liquid that is at point one okay so what happened is here you will have heat rejected okay or cooling takes place here so the mixture of vapor and liquid will be condenses until it becomes saturated liquid okay so this is the schematic diagram for the ranking cycle
Okay. So from the table, from the table, from your property table, so you search for 40 bar, 0 0.035 bar. The thing is we look at 0 0.035 bar here. Okay. Based on 0 0.035 bar, the saturation temperature is 26.7. We are not for internal energy. So we are interested in enthalpy. So we have HF here, saturated liquid enthalpy 112, dry saturated vapor enthalpy 2550. And then for the entropy, we have 0 0.391 for saturated liquid. And then the entropy of dry saturated vapor 8.521. That is based on the pressure of 0 0.035 bar. That is for the condenser. And after that, we look for 40 bar. So from the property table again, so this time you, <coughs> you'll be searching for the pressure of 40 bar. So based on 40 bar, so you have saturation temperature 250.3 and enthalpy of saturated liquid. Okay, so that can be taken at this point here. Okay, this point is dry saturated. So the enthalpy at 0.3 should be 2801. And then the entropy at 0.3 should be 6.070. So if you refer to this 2.797, should be referring to somewhere around here, this point here, based on 40 bar. Now go back to 0 0.035 bar. This 112, <clears throat> this 112 supposing to be at 0 0.1 here. 0.1, the enthalpy at 0.1 should be 112, not 2550. Okay, 2550 only if, let's say, <coughs> the points is here. If 0.1 is here, that means it's saturated liquid at this pressure, 0 0.035 bar. So that is why when we look into 0 0.035 bar, we look for this value here, which is the enthalpy of saturated liquid because it is sitting on the saturated liquid line. Okay, then the entropy we should be taking 0 0.391. So I hope everyone understand. So then what we do is we put in all the values that we have into a table. We prepare a table on our own. Okay, simplifying okay what we have. Okay, so we don't have to look at the whole bunch of numbers here. So we just put in whatever is required based on 0 0.035 and 40 bar, okay? So when you're solving problem, it is best for you to write up everything that you uh, taken from or uh, values that you have referred from the steam table and then place it into the table that you have prepared, okay? So it makes things easier, okay? Otherwise, it will be very tedious, okay? So then we start from state point one. Okay, we can start from state point three or state point one. Why we why do we start at state point one or state point three? Because we can get the reading directly from the property table or what we have here. Okay, on this at this point here that is at zero point zero three five bar and it is saturated sorry, liquid, okay, saturated liquid. So we refer to the pressure of 0 0.035. And then what we need is the enthalpy and the entropy. So that is why we write down 112 kilojoules per kg, state point one. Okay, and then we define state point one. We put it here, we state it down here, saturated liquid at 0 0.035 bar. So basically, it gives you, okay, um, the condition of state point one, okay, at that pressure and it is saturated liquid. So then you can write H1 is how much? H1 actually refers to HF at that pressure. So that is 112 HF. And then the entropy based on 0 0.035 bar because it's saturated liquid. So you take 0 0.391. Okay, and then the volume of 0 0.001 at this pressure here, 0 0.035 bar, is not shown here. Now, what you have to do is you have to refer to another section of your property tables. 
okay, for this section here, where you can see at different temperature and pressure. So you can see our pressure is 0 0.035, right? So it's somewhere around here. It's somewhere around here. So, and you can see that this volume here is denoted as F. So this is the saturated liquid, okay? The specific volume of saturated liquid at this pressure here, or this temperature. So divided by 10 to the power of negative two. So let's say, for example, we take any values here, multiply by 10 to the power of negative two, so you will get something around 0 0.001. So you don't have to follow exactly the figures or the numbers here, but then you can assume that the volume here is straight away taken as 0 0.001 meter cube per kg. Why? Okay, we consider this as constant because for liquid, okay, we said liquid is almost incompressible. It's almost incompressible. So based on low, low pressure, okay, usually the volume is taken as a constant. The specific volume of saturated liquid, okay, is considered as a constant because they assume of the assume that liquid is almost incompressible. So you take a look at this, all this whole bunch of values here. It is roughly around zero, take into account of this 10 to the power of negative two. So you get to know that the values here are roughly around 0 0.001. So that is considered as a constant because you can see it doesn't change much. So that is why we round it up, we got 0 0.001, which is treated as a constant. I'll give you an explanation here why we consider this as a constant. Okay, assume as a constant throughout since liquid may be assumed as incompressible. So due to its property of incompressibility, unless you, you raise up the pressure to a very high pressure, then maybe the volume will start to change. But otherwise at low pressure, the volume is taken as a constant throughout. So that is why we have a volume of 0 0.001 meter cube per kg. Then you go for state point two. So at state point two, now this is a compressed liquid. This is liquid. In certain property tables, it doesn't show compressed liquid. So the only way to find out the enthalpy at point two, okay, is to use this formula here by considering this volume here as a constant. And this is the pressure difference between the boiler and the condenser. So you can see P2 and P1 here. P2 actually is the boiler pressure. P2 is the boiler pressure and P1 is the condenser pressure. So the pressure difference here. Remember the pressure that we take here is in bar. So that is why we times it with 10 to the power of two so that we standardize it as in kilo. So the V1 is 0 0.001 multiplied by this, you've got a work input for the pump part it is 3.9965, or when you round it up, it becomes almost four kilojoules per kg. So that is the work input, okay? But then <clears throat> when we refer to work input, it can also be equal to H2 minus H1. But remember, we have already got our H1. So if this value is equal to H2 minus H1, and since we already know H1, we can find out the H2 based on this, okay? Based on this formula here for work input for the pump. So based on that, have the H2 as equals to 115.9965. And then you can round it up so that it becomes 116. So you've got H2. Now, why do we need all the enthalpies? So from previous, previous lesson, okay, we have proven that, okay, the heat supply, the work in, the work out, or the heat rejected, all of them are equal to the changes in enthalpy based on steady flow energy equation. So if I want to find work in, heat supply, heat rejected, or work out, so the best is when we refer to every each of these points, the first thing is we think of 
to find out the enthalpy. Sometimes the enthalpy is not directly given in the table. So you might be using interpolation or et cetera, et cetera. Okay. <clears throat> so then we move to state point three. Now state point three is sitting on the dry saturated vapor line. So and then state point three is at a boiler pressure of 40 bar. So dry saturated and 40 bar. So 40 bar, dry saturated. So we are interested only in this. 2801, not this and this. Because point three is dry saturated. So that is why you refer to HG. So it's still 2801. And then the entropy is 6.070. Now, why we take S3 as well? Okay, why we record down S3? Because we have to make use of S3. Because I, uh, sorry, state point three to state point four is an isentropic process. We know that isentropic process S3 is equal to S4 here. So we can make use of S3 equate S4. Then we find out the dryness fraction at state point four, which, has, which is at the pressure of 0 0.035 bar. So that is why we take down S3 as well, other than the enthalpy. We took down the entropy as well. So then we move to state point four, which is wet vapor. And we know that three to four is isentropic. So S4 is equal to S3. So since they are equal, so I can also say S4 is equal to 6.07 kilojoules per kgk as well. So from that, okay, if we were to calculate the dryness fraction, we have a formula for all the wet vapors. Okay, so we use SF4 plus X SFG4. X is the dryness fraction. Okay, so this is based on pressure, point is of pressure of 0 0.035 bar. That is the condenser pressure. So based on 0 0.035, so our SF is 0.391, and then our SFG is 8.13. Okay, so you can find out the dryness fraction, which is 0 0.6985, or equivalent to 0 0.7 which is still considered as low quality steam. Unless these values go above 0 0.9, that is considered as high quality, below 0 0.9, anything below 0 0.9 is considered low quality steam. So low quality steam at state point four, when you look at the dryness fraction. So once you've got the dryness fraction, the next thing is what we want is enthalpy. So we have to find out the enthalpy at point four, and we know that is wet vapor. So that is why we have to find out the dryness fraction. Then only we can find H four. So H four, you apply this again only for wet vapors or mixture of liquid and vapor. So based on this pressure again, that means looking at zero point zero three five bar only. Okay. So H F is one one two. Dryness fraction we got HFG is 2468. So we got the enthalpy of 1815H4. So once you have got H1, H2, H3, and H4, now what we can do is find out work in, work in we have found, work out, work out is on this isentropic expansion here. So you can take H3 minus H4, boiler from here to 3. So you can take H3 minus H2, heat supply, Q in, and then heat rejected Q out. That is the condenser, 4 to 1, so 4 and 1. So you can take H4 minus H1. So find out every each, okay, energy, the energy that is within the device produced or produced by the device based on boiler, you have heat supply based on turbine, you have work output, based on condenser, you have heat rejected, based on pump, you have work input. So all those are derived from your steady flow, yeah? So work done from three to four, that is work out. So the values of H3 and H4, we have got, so we can find out the work out. 
Then the next thing is the pump work, that is the work input. Work input or pump work, this is work out or the turbine work. So that is one to two, so you can take H2 minus H1, so which we have found earlier. Then point three, that is heat rejected, four to one. Okay, so you can take H4 minus H1, that is heat rejected. <clears throat> then you can find out, okay, based on heat rejected, one thing, the, there's one part of the question that asks us to find the amount of cooling water that is required, okay, that is required, okay, to cool down the uh, vapor refrigerant so it becomes saturated liquid, right? So we can use Q equals to MC theta. This is your MC theta when you when you did uh, when you do your physics, it is MC theta. So in term more, we put MC delta T. Delta T means the change in temperature. CP is a specific capacity of constant pressure for, okay, for dry saturated or for liquid, okay, saturated liquid, 4.18. Okay, so from this, you can find out the mass flow or the mass, which is 74 kg mass of water. Then you can find out the heat supply that is between uh, 2 and 3. So that is H3 minus H2. So you've got your heat supply. Then of course, the thermal efficiency, the network out over heat supply times 100%. So you can find out your network out either by using work out minus work in or heat supply. This is heat supply, sorry. Heat supply minus heat rejected. Okay. So your network out can be found by work out minus work in or heat supply minus heat rejected then divided by heat supply you got your thermal efficiency or the cycle efficiency is 36.6 percent sometimes it's called the cycle efficiency then specific steam consumption short form we call ssc okay it's defined as 3600 over network out what is this from the word consumption so what it means is now in the turbine if you are looking at the turbine that means okay how much of steam is utilized if you were to refer refers to the turbine it, re, uh, it, it is defined as how much of steam in kg is utilized okay to produce one kilowatt of power in one hour I repeat, okay, specific steam consumption based on turbine is how much of steam is utilized or converted to energy. How much of steam, that means in kg, converted to one kilowatt hour in one hour. That is specific steam consumption. Now, if let's say, for example, you refer to a boiler part is how much of steam is produced, okay, in kg in order to give us one kilowatt power in one hour okay that is the definition of specific steam consumption so when you look at the unit is kg per kilowatt hour and it's 3600 divided by its network output now part b we refers to carnot now carnot is very direct so what we need to know is the entropy, S2, S3, or S1 and S4. See, they are the same. And then, of course, the temperature, you have to add 273, 273 here. Okay, so 26.7, that is based on pressure 0 0.035 bar. So when you look at the table, Okay, the temperature is 26.7, so add it with 273 because it is that means it's Kelvin. So and the higher temperature is based on the boiling boiling temperature of the substance in the boiler. So that is at 250.3 plus 273. So you get the cycle efficiency or the Carnot efficiency as 42.73. So when you compare both the efficiency Carnot cycle actually will give you a higher efficiency, okay, higher efficiency. 
So this would be your heat supply. So in order to find out your heat supply, remember the area. So you have to put in, uh, I think something wrong here. This should be minus, yeah, not 273, the yeah, S mean here. Something wrong here. Okay, so you will get your heat supply this this amount. Okay, or you can use this to find out your network out. Okay, so once you've got your kind of efficiency and your heat supply, actually you can find out your network out. So then after that, you can compare. Okay, and the SSC is 4.92 kg per kilowatt hour. So as you compare, okay, as you compare, this is 3.67 only. Whereas for current cycle, you have 4.92. So that means current cycle, okay, you will be able to uh, look into the difference between the SSC and also the cycle efficiency. The cycle efficiency is higher and as well as the specific steam consumption, okay? All for this problem solving, this question, so we'll move ahead with the next, uh, the superheated ranking cycle. Okay, and uh, thank you. And see you in the next lesson. Bye. Okay. Now, the second problem solving on superheat ranking cycle. This will be on superheat ranking cycle. Okay, here. In a steam turbine, okay, in a steam turbine at pressure 20 bar, temperature 350 degrees C. Now, based on 20 bar and 350, steam here, the condition of the steam should be superheated. Okay, so at this is at the turbine inlet. So that means the pressure and temperature and the boiler, this is the boiler pressure. And also the inlet condition of the steam turbine. And it's expanded to 0 0.08 bar pressure. Then it enters the condenser where it is condensed to saturated liquid water. That means complete condensation takes place at pressure 0 0.08 bar. Now the pump feeds back the water into the boiler. That means after feeding, then it, the cycle is complete. Now assume ideal processes, find per kg of steam, the network and the cycle efficiency or the ranking efficiency or the thermal efficiency. So this would be the schematic diagram for your superheated ranking cycle. You don't have to put a superheater inside. You can just draw a simple line like this to represent everything. So that is based on pressure 20 bar and the superheated temperature of 350 degrees. So when you look for or look into your property table or steam table, okay, you should look for pressure 20 bar and temperature 350 in the superheated section. Okay, then it enters the turbine, undergoes isentropic expansion, then it goes to the condenser, pressure of 0 0.08 bar, then goes to the feed pump. Then the saturated liquid is being fitted to the boiler, undergoes constant pressure heating, producing steam 35020 bar. So that completes the cycle. So this is a table that okay, so based on pressure 0 0.08, the saturation temperature is 41.5. And these are the relevant data, okay, have been written down here. Okay, and then the second one is based on 20 bar. And then I didn't put in everything. Okay, I put in only the necessary thing, necessary stuff. This is enthalpy. 
okay not hg anymore because at this 20 bar is super heated but i put it in this form here okay 3138 for the h at this temperature and this pressure that means here eh, we are referring to superheated okay so i don't have hf hfg or hg straight away is the enthalpy 3138 and the entropy s 6.957 so from the property table you can search 20 bar and then you look at 20 bar here inside this bracket here shows you the saturation temperature that means the boiling temperature but then they have given us 350 that means 350 here when you look into 350 and compare with 212 we know that it is already superheated so you move on to temperature 350 here so from 350 and 20 bar these are the properties the specific volume the internal energy the enthalpy and the entropy so 3138 6.957 so based on this diagram we know this is your isentropic expansion your work output turbine here is where you have your heat rejected the condenser three to four is pump compression isentropic compression work input then four five one is where you have you have your heat supply four five one which is a constant pressure this is a ts diagram so here this point one here 350 degrees c should be your superheated temperature so that is why when we refer to the table we refer to 350 just now your schematic this is your condenser okay state point one that's okay straight away we can take that okay h1 here is equals to this enthalpy from the table from the table so based on the pressure of 20 bar and 350 degree c you have the enthalpy h you don't write it as hg yeah g stands for dry saturated but this is superheated so 3138 kilojoules per kg and the entropy is 6.957 this is what we need at state point one we start at state point one because we know the pressure we know the temperature already so that is why we can straight away start with state point one and then move to state point two where we know the pressure and the entropy because we know the entropy 6.957 okay s2 which is also equals to s1 here constant entropy or isentropic it's your state point two which is wet steam okay wet steam okay here inside the dome this is outside the dome towards the right that is superheated inside the dome is wet vapor or wet steam which is a pressure 0 0.08 bar okay so when you refer to references okay they usually call it as mixture of liquid and vapor okay you can also call it as wet vapor or wet steam so the entropy is a constant here isentropic expansion so based on this at 0 0.08 bar you will be able to find out the dryness fraction by putting in at 0 0.08 your sf and your SFG, okay, SF 0.593 and SFG 7.634. So you will be able to find out the dryness fraction 0.834. Here I don't substitute the values for you. You can do it yourself when you have time, okay? Now, after that, you can find out the enthalpy HF, this hfg i'm oh sorry hfg is this so you will be able to find out your h2 2177.2 kilojoules per kg then you have your state point three that is this we don't need the entropy we need we need the enthalpy and it is sitting on the saturated liquid line so and is at the pressure of 0 0.08 so it is 174 then state point four 
here. Okay, so again, you can use the formula that I've shown you just now. H4 H3, that is your work input. H4 minus H3 is so your work input. Is equals to Vf, subscript F, yeah? Pb, boiler pressure, minus condenser pressure, power 2. Why times 10 power 2? Because if these are in bars, the unit measurement in bars, then you times 10 to the power of 2 because you want to convert it to kilo. So 0 0.001, that is your Vf. 174, that is your HF at 0.3. So you got 176 H4. So you can see the difference is very small. There's only two. Okay, that is just a 0.4. So one, two, three, and four. So we have got our enthalpy for all the respective points. We have already got the enthalpy for all the respective points. So and then after that, okay, we need to know network out because you know we need to find the rank kind efficiency, ranking efficiency, um, and the specific steam consumption. Okay, so network out, we know we can refer to work out minus work in either heat supply minus heat rejected or heat supply minus heat rejected. So work in is from here, H4 minus H3. So put it in, work in is 2 kilojoules per kg. Or they say per per kilo uh, per kilogram of mass, right? So you can times it with one. You times it with one, it becomes two kilojoule. So the work out is based on the turbine H1 minus H2. So put in the value of H1, H2, so you can find out your work out. So once you got your work in and work out, then you can straight away go for your network out. Okay, which is 958.8 or you can take heat supply minus heat rejected the same so heat supply is one to four so you take h1 minus h4 if you want to find h5 it's easy based on pressure okay of 20 bar this is based on 20 bar hf yeah based on 20 bar hf okay this is different this is super heated. this is based on 20 bar the HF, but we don't need 0.5. So H1, so that is 2962. Then you can find cycle efficiency, network divided by heat supply, see, times 100%. So if a cycle efficiency, 32.4%. Now, if you are, if you wanted to work extra, you can compare to Kano cycle. Kano cycle efficiency, just take the highest temperature plus 273 divided by the lowest temperature the lowest temperature plus 273 over the highest temperature plus 273 then take one minus of this ratio temperature ratio okay so then you can start comparing the kernel efficiency with the cycle efficiency for the superheat ranking okay that's for this problem thank you Stay safe. Bye bye. Okay. This is on reheat ranking cycle. So we start up the question. So steam is supplied to a two stage turbine at 40 bar and 350 degrees C, boiler pressure, superheated temperature. It expands in the first turbine, that is the high pressure turbine, until it is just dry saturated. Okay, then it is reheated to 350 degrees C. Okay, and expanded through the second stage turbine, that is the low pressure turbine. So going in at 0.3 at 40 bar and 350, then it expands through the first turbine until it is just dry saturated here dry saturated so it touches the dry saturated vapor line so this would be the pressure which you can find later on okay then it is reheated to 350 so that means this temperature here should be 350 this temperature here should be 350 okay 
reheated to 350 temperature, that means 0.3 and 0.5 superheated temperature should be the same. There is a slight difference in this diagram. So the condenser pressure is 0 0.035 bar. This is the condenser pressure. Calculate the work output heat supply per kilogram of steam for the plant. Assuming ideal processes and neglecting the feed pump term. Calculate the specific steam consumption and the cycle efficiency. So this will be a schematic diagram. State point three means your turbine inlet. So that is your high pressure turbine inlet at boiler pressure at a pressure of 40 bar and a temperature of 350. Then it undergo isentropic expansion through the first turbine that is your high pressure turbine until state point four. Then it is sent back to the boiler for reheating. Then coming out at state point five, which is should be 350 again, because the question say after reheating to the temperature of 350. So this should be 350 again. Then going into the low pressure turbine where it undergoes another isentropic expansion. To point six, which is still wet, okay. Then it goes into the condenser where it undergoes full condensation until it reaches or uh, until it completely change to saturated liquid. Then it goes into the pump where it undergoes isentropic compression again back to the boiler. So the cycle repeats thereafter. So now these are the data extracted from the property tables or steam table based on one pressure condenser, based on the second one that is the boiler pressure. They are all in bars. Okay. So this only shows you the dry saturated steam. If it is superheated, then you should be referring to pressure 40 and 350 degrees C. So these are the properties that is based on 40 bar and 350 degrees Celsius. So state point one, sorry here, which is saturated liquid at 0 0.01 bar. So, uh, sorry, 0 0.035 bar. So, saturated liquid 112 and 0.391, both the enthalpy and the entropy. The specific volume for liquid, you assume almost incompressible, so that is why it's a constant 0 0.001. Then, to calculate H2, you need to take H2 minus H1 equals to Vf multiply by the difference in the pressure or you find out the work in based on this first. So the work in is actually equals to VF that is 0 0.001 multiplied by the difference in pressure P2 minus P1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2. So the work in should be approximately 4 kilojoules per kg. So once you have got that then equate 4 kilojoules per kg or 3.9965 to H2 minus H1, which is also the work input. So from that, you will be able to find out your H2. So you have got your H1 and H2 found. Then the next one is moved to point 3. Point 3 is at the superheated temperature of 350 and 40 bar. So 40 bar, 350. What we need is the enthalpy and the entropy. Time when you see there is an isentropic compression or expansion. These are expansions. Okay, you need the point before it undergoes the expansion. Please make sure you have the entropy written down. Okay, because 3 to 4 is constant entropy, isentropic. 5 to 6 is also isentropic, which is constant entropy. So, which enables you to find out the property at the point after that, that means 0.4 and 0.6. So, say point 3, 
we get the enthalpy and the entropy. State point four, we equate both the entropy, uh, sorry, entropy. Then to state point four, again, we can find out the dryness fraction. Okay. So before that, of course, okay, based on the enthalpy of dry saturated steam at 6.584 and search in your property table, okay, in your property table, it should be, okay, you look at SG for this, 6.584, somewhere around in between. Then you look at the property table, it should be approximately 10 bar, okay? That is this pressure here. This pressure here should be 10 bar. Okay, if you take base on this value. So H4 based on 10 bar, you can find out the enthalpy straight away from the property table as well. Okay, 0.4 is not bad here, only 0.6. Okay, so you can find out your H5 based on 10 bar and 350 because they say reheated to the same temperature, that is 350, and S5 at 10 bar and 350. This is 10 bar 350 and 10 bar 350, you will get your enthalpy and the entropy. So from that, yes, 0.6 is wet. 0.4 is not there. Yeah? 0.4 dryness fraction is one. So 0.6 is wet. So what you need to do is equate five and six, the entropy, to find out the dryness fraction, okay? So that gives you 0.85 low quality steam. Then H6, include the dryness fraction to find out H6, 2184. So once you got your H6, that means the whole process is complete. So you have found out all the enthalpies at each state point, okay? Sorry on this so I have to show you from this diagram so workout is based on both the isentropic expansion three four five six the total workout his supply is based on two three and four five okay so you've got your total heat supply and total workout heat rejected should be six one here okay so your SSC will be based on 3006 divided by network out. How to find network out? You can take heat supply minus heat rejected or work out minus work in. So your SSC specific steam consumption is only 2.8 kilograms utilized to generate one kilowatt power in one hour. So, and the cycle efficiency, usually we call it a cycle or ranking efficiency, cycle efficiency here now network over his supply so you can straight away use network out by taking his supply minus it rejected or work out minus work in divided by his supply instead of applying this so you can take network out over his supply to find out the cycle efficiency that's all thank you stay safe